Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. I am so excited about today's project! We are making Hobbit Door Pockets. This project was inspired by a project Kira did for My Porch Prints as part of their Decorating Pockets series. I'll link that video below. And I took her idea and turned it into a Hobbit door. Let's get crafting! So I am so excited. As I said in the intro, today we are making pockets with Hobbit doors! So for all the non-nerds out there who don't know who, what hobbits are, they are inhabitants of Tolkien's Middle Earth that are about two to four feet tall and they have furry feet and they live in burrow-like houses under hills that, and their houses usually have round doors, hence my deciding to make a hobbit door pocket with the little round door. I just love this idea. Um, so let's go through the materials you're going to need to make your Hobbit door with us, with me today. You're going to need a piece of paper for your pocket. I'm using watercolor paper because I decided I wanted to watercolor my door. You can use regular cardstock, you can use a printable, whatever you want to use to create your pocket and door. That's what you're going to need. It should be, um, it should have some weight to it. You don't you don't want to use copy paper for your pocket because that'll be a little flimsy for when you're taking things in and out of the pocket. You're also going to need something to trace to create the circle shape on your door and so it should be sized so that it gives you the right size door for your pocket. And it probably should tell you I cut my piece of paper for my pocket four um, long by three and a half high and so when I made this one, I used a circle die and traced around the outside, um, which then meant I had to do that again to create the inside panel because I wanted to hide the Brad hardware on the back there. Because see on this, you can see I wanted to hide the feet. I didn't want them to show when my door opened. So I decided for this one, instead of doing that, if I cut out the circle with the die, I could trace it around and then just use this circle to attach to the back of the door to cover up the Brad hardware this time around. So you're just going to need something circular to trace that suits whatever size. I mean, you could just grab this is a spool of ribbon and I could use that, although that's a little small for it. But so just a size appropriate circle. And then you're going to need for your door mechanism, a couple of brads and a bulb pin, which is B-U-L-B, because um, it looks like a little light bulb. If you don't have a bulb pin, you probably could use a regular safety pin for this, just something to serve as your latch. And then a piece of vellum, or you could use clear acetate or packing material because you want to back the pocket so that when you put things in and out of your pocket they're not catching on the door but you want to be able to have that lovely reveal where you can see whatever it is you've tucked into your pocket behind your door. I'm using watercolor paper because I decided I wanted to watercolor my door. You of course could use regular cardstock and colored pencils to do your door and background, distress inks, Copic markers, pick your paper based on what you're going to create your door out of. You could also pick a lighter weight cardstock, cover it with design paper to create your background. And I know there are some design papers out there with like the images of like weathered wood. In fact, I have a pack. I may try making one that way. Um, but where you then cut out your door with a separate piece of, of the design paper and cover it with that. Whatever you like for making your door, it, it's, it's crafter's choice in that regard. Um, and on this one, I did end up deciding I wanted to put a little window in my door. <laughs> 
it was a bit of a pain in the neck just because you may be able to see I didn't quite get it lined up right when I was cutting out for the back so I think I may skip the window on this one make my life a little bit easier so let's get started I am going to start by placing my circle kind of in the middle and I'm sorry that it's going to be hard for you to see since I cut it out of white paper as well and then you just trace around your circle to make your door shape voila there's our door shape you can see better um, I am going to take out my kneaded eraser and lighten that up just a little bit because I am watercoloring and I, I find that if you leave too much pencil mark on once you watercolor over it it's really hard to get it to erase off so I'm just going to lightly go around and lighten up my line so that I can still see it but it's not as pronounced it's, it's a little bit fainter now but I can still see where my circle is. I'm using watercolor paints for this. Again, crafter's choice on how you want to color your door. And so I have got Daniel Smith watercolors. And so that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna just show you, here's my giant palette because I am horrible about wanting like all the colors. <laughs> so yeah, I got a giant palette so I could have all my colors out. I, I do suffer from all the colors syndrome. <laughs> like I want all the colors. And I think for this one, we are gonna go ahead and just do the same colors I did on the first door. I have a feeling I'm gonna make a ton of these. I'm just gonna add a little water to the color I want, which is not actually on screen. Cause yeah, this sucker's ginormous. Here, let me turn it this way so you can see the full palette of all the colors. Um, and I am using ultramarine turquoise and I have this is like my mixing palette because I find that there's not enough space in the one that's part of um, my, my palette. So I'm just gonna put some in my mixing palette and then add a little water to that to dilute it a little bit. Shift things around a bit so that we can function. All right, so I'm on screen, there's my door. That's way too intense of a color right now. So I'm gonna add Sorry about the arm. And I'm just gonna paint the circle part. So this, as I mentioned in the intro, was inspired by a My Porch Prints video I was watching where she was creating two different types of pockets, one with a window in it and one with a door. And as soon as I saw her doing the door, my brain started screaming at me, Hobbit door, Hobbit door pockets. So my, my muse is a bit pushy. So basically it was a matter of, okay, must make Hobbit door pockets now. Like whatever else I had planned was out the window because when my muse wants to make something, that's all we're making. This is also why I have a lot of half finished projects around my craft space because yeah, I may be in the middle of a project and the muse decides, no, we we have to do this now. Um, so, and as I have been planning this video and working on my sample and thinking about my Hobbit doors, I have got so many other ideas to go along with this. I think I'm definitely, so if, if, if you're not, you know, a Tolkien nerd, so you're not all that into hobbits, you could easily make these into fairy doors. These could be doors to um, enchanted gardens. There's, there's a multiple, a uh, multitude of ideas for what kind of door this could be and what kind of, you know, wall or background you could put your door in. So I'm definitely going to do one where I make it a little um, more fairy door shaped, like a different shape from the round. I have, I have an idea for that. Um, I also have an idea for how this would make uh, a couple of really cute uh, cards. I'm going to use the heat tool to dry this so we can get moving on to the next step. 
that is dry. Now I'm gonna put, like I did on this one, a little like stone step up to the door. And for that, I am using neutral tint and yellow ochre to make a brownie gray. So I've already got that mixed on my palette from the last time. And I'm just gonna kind of like eyeball in the stoop for the house. So yeah, I'm, I'm sticking to really simple shapes for this. I'm not getting super crazy. So even if you're not, you know, a big drawer, If that's not your thing, these are these are these are simple shapes. It's just a rounded off rectangle, right? Not too difficult. And honestly, that looks a little like a snow globe. I have a feeling I'm going to be making some kind of snow globe pocket in the future as well. Like I said, the ideas for this are infinite. Uh, so yeah, I have a feeling I'm gonna end up making a playlist of all the variants we can do on our Hobbit door pockets. All right, so again, I'm going to go ahead and dry that. For those of you who are new to watercoloring, the reason I'm drying between each step is because if it was still wet, anything I put near it would blend together. And so if I want to keep my circle lines clean and my um, stoop lines clean, I need them to be dry before I go on to the next step. Now, for the background wall, I was keeping it fairly light and neutral because I am also planning on adding some die cuts to create, like, give it a feel of being in a gardeny type setting. So I've got a bunch of die cut ivy leaves that I'm going to put up around it, so I don't need the background to be too spectacular, but you could do whatever you want to create your the, the front of the house, the house facade. You could, you could do stonework, you can make it look like bark for a tree, like the ideas are endless. I have a feeling I'm going to be making a ridiculous number of hobbit doors, um, pockets. So for my background wall, what I did was I mixed more of the yellow ochre with perylene green. So I'm just going to go in, that's looking very green this time around, and just paint my background. We had a bit of excitement here last night. I went to let my dogs out in the yard, and there was... I believe it's a yellow rat, was a yellow rat snake on my screen and porch. And of course, my dog Bert is a mighty, mighty hunter. And so he went on attack, attack beagle mode and got the snake and tossed him around and shook him up and wasn't entirely sure if he, I, my thought at the end of the evening when I finally got Bart away from the snake and into the house was that the snake was dead and I kind of used a broom to scooch him off my screened in porch and out to the side yard. Um, but he wasn't there this morning, so he might have survived or he might have become somebody's late night snack last night. I don't know, but yeah. We, we, we had Bert, the killer beagle, last night. And this is the third or fourth snake he has managed to kill or mostly kill. He's also taken out three moles that he has dug up. So he, he is a mighty hunter is my Bart. All right, so there's our background colored in. And it is, I know it's kind of plain, but I plan on decorating to make it um, prettier. And you know what, I need to 
color. And that's the mighty hunter groaning in the background if you hear, can hear that. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint this sucker. I'm gonna go in and make both the inside and the front of the door a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna add another coat of the um, ultramarine turquoise to the door. All right, and so the last touch on our doors is going to be to add some lines down it to make it look like it's a wood door put together by planks. And for that, I'm going to use the ultramarine turquoise and I'm going to add a bit of Mayan blue genuine to it, which is kind of like a gray blue color. Now these are going to be far from perfect, but it just want, I just want to give the impression that this was put together with planks of wood. We're gonna we're we're gonna try and get our lines to match up a little bit by just putting our circle kind of close by and nobody's really gonna be able to tell on the piece that's on the inside. So I'm not all that worried about it, but I figured this way it might make my life a little easier as I'm not gonna be trying to figure out where do I put the next line on the inside piece. Again, I'm not all that worried that they're not perfect because, you know, I'm just trying to give the impression of wood planks. And I figure these are hobbits in Middle Earth. They're hand tuned planks for their doors. So the fact that it's not perfect is okay. All right, so there are our planks for our door. Now you could get as elaborate, as elaborate here as you want for your doors. Like you could sit and make it look like there's knotting wood and all that. I'm not gonna go quite that overboard. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that with the heat tool just to make sure everything's nice and dry. And then we're gonna get to assembly. Now on this one, I notched the corners off to give it kind of like a pitched house feel to it. This one, I think I'm gonna round the top corners. So I'm gonna grab my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper, and it's the corner rounder, and I'm gonna do the half inch setting. I think I need to run um, some tin foil through my corner chomper, because it needs to be sharpened, I think. Now, we are gonna need to cut out the circle, but not all the way. You need to leave a bit still attached, right? You want your door to stay attached. So you decide which side you want your latch on. And I think because, I think I have more space on this side, I'm gonna put my latch on this side. So I'm gonna cut out my circle and stop leaving a bit still attached. For this, I am gonna use my Fisker fingertip knife, I think is what it's called. And so take your time doing this because you wanna cut your door out as neatly as possible. And just cut around. And I think for this, your best choice is some kind of craft knife, an exacto blade, whatever type of craft knife you might have. Because getting your scissors in is gonna be a bear. Stop there. I'm gonna see how well the door's hinging up. I need to go a little bit further. 
so that I can hinge my door. So there is our door. And I notice I've got, didn't cut it out perfectly. Um, so what I may do now is just go around and kind of darken around the edge in the greeny yellow color that I used for this, just do a more concentrated um, version to hide the excess. So I went ahead and painted essentially a door frame around the door to cover up the spots that were not cleaned, cut off cleanly. I also went around all of the edges on um, this piece and the door so that we wouldn't have any white showing. So now it's time to attach our hardware to decide where we want our little hinge to go. So I'm gonna make a mark on the door for the first brad. And I'm using my mirror, me are, we are memory keeper. <laughs> There's a whole bunch and this is the one that's got all the different hole sizes on it. Um, you just need a small hole punch. This is a 1 16th. I actually have, I think a, it's either 1 16th or 1 8th somewhere, just an individual one somewhere around here, but this is what I have handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and Line it up with my dot. All right, I'm gonna do this off camera because I can't see my dot. All right, so I poked the hole in there. So we're gonna stick the brad through the bolt pin and the hole. Did not have this much trouble off camera doing this. <laughs> don't know why my fingers don't wanna work this morning. There we go. Push that down, turn it over, and then just open up the brad right there. So there's our latch attached. Then we need to put a hole. Now we need it to go. Not lose the brad. About there. Don't know if you can see the little dot I made. Go back in with a pencil and make it bigger. So it's got to go about there so that our latch will sit kind of under. So we're gonna go ahead and poke that hole. And if you don't have a hole punch, you can also use an awl to poke your holes in. Actually, it is a little bit easier to see on the lighter color. So I'm just lining up my hole with the hole and the hole punch, punching through. There we go. Now for this brad, I'm not gonna wanna put it all the way tight. I wanna have, you know, the the latch catch on it. So I'm gonna make sure I have my latch under it before I tighten down the tines so that now it can flip up and we can open our door. And then it can flip down and up and down. Just, I think I'm gonna make that a little bit looser just so that the mechanism moves a little easier. And then we're gonna do that so that, yep, it moves up and down. So you need to make all of your adjustments to the brads now because once we attach this piece and the vellum on the back, you won't be able to access your brad legs. Now you, of course, and I believe in the My Porch Prints video, um, they attached the vellum and then put the brad in and then you can adjust your brad after your vellum's attached. 
but I want to make sure my pocket's nice and smooth. I think part of the problem is there's a little bit of a, I don't think you'll be able to, oh, it helps if I'm on camera. There's a little piece of metal hanging down from that portion of the brad, so I think I'm going to turn my brad, and that should work smoother. And I'm also going to right now stick a piece of tape so that my tines don't move and this doesn't shift. So I'm just going to stick a little piece of tape to hold those brad feet exactly where I want them so that it stays up and my mechanism moves good. And I'll just trim off that excess tape. And now we are ready to attach our door back and our vellum. And actually before I attach my door back, I noticed on my first one that I was getting a little cracking on my hinge. So I am gonna put a little bit of um, washi tape over that just to reinforce my hinge so that it doesn't fall apart on me and I lose my door. You don't have to do this. You could also use scotch tape if you don't have any washi. I just want something flexible that will help reinforce the hinge area so that my door will last longer. And because this washi tape is not very sticky, I am going to use a little bit of glue on it. I'm grabbing my art glitter glue. That hinge is reinforced. And the bit on the back of the door is not going to show because we're going to add our door cover for the inside. And that will cover up our brad feet and make sure our door is nice and clean on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use our glitter glue for that. We're going to want to hold the area by the brad for a second because with the lump, it's going to take a minute just to grab there, go around, make sure we're all nice and attached. And then we're going to close our door and make sure we don't need to trim off because there might be some spots that need some trimming. Because see, there's a bit showing. I think I'm going to trim this bit here to make the hinge work a little bit better. So just go around, double check, Make sure your front door is all that's showing and anywhere it seems to be sticking a little. Just do a little trimming and then go back in and add a little bit more color. So I went ahead and trimmed out anywhere I felt the door was sticking when I was trying to shut it and repainted any white spots that were showing. So now we've got our door and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the vellum to the back. Now be sure when you're gluing, don't put any glue on your door or you will glue your door shut. So just glue all around. And so let me go ahead and do that real quick before I have to go let puppers out into the yard. Because somebody's getting antsy. Get them pinching around where that the brad feet are to help make sure it's nice and stuck on. Trim off the excess vellum around my rounded corners. So there's our Hobbit door pocket. I just love this. Um, we are gonna go ahead and do a little bit of decorating. So what I've done is die cut a bunch of rubber necker dies out of watercolor paper and here are the dies I have die cut. I don't think I'm going to use the large ivy on the door pocket but I'm probably going to incorporate it into the spread I plan on creating in my junk journal for where I'm going to put my habit door. So I am just going to go ahead and watercolor all these pieces and I'll be back after I do that. This mix is a mix of sap green and green gold. And I'm just gonna quickly add paint to them. Uh, for the flowers, I'm gonna use a couple different um, shades. I'm gonna use Quin Rose, Rhodonite Genuine, and some 
Carver's all purple. I decided for the background scene I'm going to create in my junk journal, I want to have some flowers in the same color as the door. And because these pieces are so small, I'm going to have to let them air dry. <laughs> I can't use my heat gun to dry them. So everybody dried and you may have noticed when I was painting them, I was just kind of slapping the paint on so that I'd get some variation in how each of the flowers looked and to not spend a ton of time. Now, of course, you could always die cut these out of colored cardstock or paint your paper before you die cut. Um, I don't like doing that because then the edges tend to be white and that bugs me. Here is our pocket and I'm going to start by adding the ivy to it. So you can see I got a nice variation on all the little leaves. I'm going to use my tweezers and some art glitter glue. Now when you're decorating, going off these sides, not really an issue, but you don't want stuff hanging off the top of here because that's going to interfere in putting stuff in and out of your pocket. And you also don't want to interfere with your door mechanism, so be careful of that. So for this one, on the top so to ensure it's not hanging off everywhere I am going to just snip off pieces. Stick him up there and I know he's kind of floating but we've got flowers to add to add a little bit of color and extra leaves. Now I'm gonna use my quick stick to pick them up just pretty much find a spot where I want to stick a flower Put a dot of glue. And pop it down. And so I'm just gonna go around and add flowers. And there we have our finished Hobbit door. Next time I am going to do a page spread in my junk journal to attach the Hobbit door because I have an idea to make a cute page spread to go with this pocket. But I don't want this video to be ridiculously long so that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed my video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You're especially going to want to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be certain you don't miss part two of our Hobbit door pocket. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this project. If you have any suggestions for what we can do with our Hobbit door pockets. Um, or if you just want to say, hey, thanks for joining me and happy crafting.